everybody, this is my channel Sewing Bunny and my name's Michelle. Thank you so much for joining me in my video today, which is sharing with you everything that I made in 2022. Now I did want to share this video probably more like in January, but I was doing other things and um, yeah, other videos and I just suddenly thought, do you know what, I haven't done this video yet and I would really like to um, share everything with you because I did mention I think in one of my earlier videos, you know, would anyone be interested in, um, you know, a big video of what I made last year? And loads of you said you'd love to see it. So, um, yeah, I thought I would do a, a little roundup of everything I made in 2022. I will be going through them at a reasonable speed because there are, I think, 47 items that I made. Um, I will linger on on some um, more than others but yeah it's not going to be detailed like you know things like that it's just going to literally be just a quick sort of overview of what I've made you know do I wear it still um etc etc um before I do start I'll let you know what I'm wearing um this is my Tilly and the Buttons Stella hoodie in this amazing marble print um French terry that I got from Little Legs Fabrics ages ago I made this actually in oh is it the year before Four? Oh no, it might have been even earlier than that. Anyway, I made it ages ago and it's still just as bright and vibrant. I wear this all the time. So, um, if I do look down, um, it's because I have my Instagram page open on my laptop because I thought, oh, I could write down everything. And I was like, no, do you know what? I share everything um, that I make on Instagram. So I will be looking down. Um, just every now and again to remind myself <laughs> um, of the items that I made. So yes, grab yourself a cup of tea or something like that if you haven't done so already. I've got myself a lovely chai tea. Um, I've actually got two, two teas because I've got this one that I'm going to have when I'm recording and then I'm going to stay up in my sewing room to continue my organisation and I've got a flask of jasmine tea as well. Just because you can't have enough tea. <laughs> um, yes, I will just say, just for anyone that's wondering, because I'm trying to give you regular updates on how I'm getting on, with my sewing room organisation and wardrobe organisation. Um, my wardrobe is done, so that's great. I have a whole pile of um, clothes that I'm going to be donating, um, but I just need to kind of sort through everything. Um, so I will share what I've done in my wardrobe very, very soon. Um, as for my sewing room, I'm looking around and, oh, it's looking so much better, so much better. I've literally just got like the silly stuff to sort out now just like the little bits, like knowing where I'm going to put things. Um, but everything else is looking really, really nice. So yes, I will share with you how my sewing room um, is looking very, very soon as well. So let's get going because otherwise this video is going to be really, really long. <laughs> so I'll start off with um, I, I believe this is the sort of order that I've done them in because, as I say, I'm looking at my Instagram page. So I normally share things um, in the order I've made them. So we'll start off with. So in 2022, in January, I was actually away on my honeymoon. So I didn't actually make um, many things um, at the beginning of January. It's actually more when I got home. And the first thing that I made, well, I actually finished off was um, the Sew Over It Molly dress in this really, really pretty floral jersey fabric. So I actually had this cut out in November and I think I started sewing it actually in November and then I just literally put it to one side, forgot about it, had other things to do and I didn't actually finish it off until the end of January. So that was the first one that I made. So it's a little bit sort of wintery Christmassy sort of colours so I'll be honest I haven't actually worn that much um I did wear it um sort of I think it was November-ish I think last year um but yeah haven't worn that a great deal um I think it is because maybe the colours are a little bit festive um but I do love that dress and uh, I hope to get a lot more wear from it and then the next one is again another Sew Over It Molly dress. So this one, I think I did cut out again in November time, but I didn't actually sew any of it up until the end of January. I think I actually batch sewed both of those, I think, together. And the um, fabric on this one was a lovely grey, and then it had like a sort of 
dandelion um, sort of whatever those little you know <laughs> fairies um, are. <laughs> I hope you know what I mean. Um, and that was a really, really nice one. I did that one um, a three quarter sleeve and I did actually finish it off with a little bit of um, a white cuff with a complement of the neckband as well. That one I have worn lots. Um, I think it's because it's a shorter sleeve and it's a bit more, more of a spring sort of summer print. Then the next one was the Deer and Doe dress from their ebook. Um, and this one, again, I think I had it cut out and made up more or less sort of in November time, but again, put it to one side and I finished it off um, at the end of January. So yeah, this is from their ebook. And this dress was really nice, really easy to make. Um, you can have elastic going through um, the waist, but I actually opted to not put the elastic in so that I could wear it with a belt. So this one, I must admit, I love the fabric, absolutely love it. But do you know what? I actually wasn't wearing it that much. I think there was just something about it that, I don't know, maybe it might have been the length um, or something like that, that I just wasn't really reaching for it. And actually this dress, I've actually since given to my mum. Um, I think it was kind of back in the summer time, I think I gave it to her because I think um, I was kind of asking her for like sort of ideas of what I wanted to make um, for her as a gift. And um, I think I actually bought round this dress for her to try on and she tried on and she actually fell in love with it. And do you know what? I kind of just said to her, I was like, do you know what? I haven't actually worn it since I've made it. If you want it, you can have it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I did actually give that one to my mum actually back in the summer. Um, whether I'd make that dress again, I'm not sure, because as I say, I wasn't quite sure what about it was not quite me. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'd make that again. Then we've got next up is the Stylark Rear Knit Top. So this one was made in a viscose jersey, really comfortable. I wear that uh, quite often to work quite a lot because it's got kind of like a dipped um, hem. So it's shorter at the front than it is at the back. And um, yeah, it's just a really nice kind of casual sort of top to wear. But actually, it's quite, quite smart, I think, in that sort of fabric that I've done. So I kind of wear it with black trousers and I think it actually looks really nice. Just scrolling up on my Instagram. Um, Next up was my um, Paddington top by Peppermint Magazine. So this is a free sewing pattern. I believe I did a sew along for this as well. I love this top. I have worn this absolutely loads. Really, really nice. I love how it fits. It's in a really floaty viscose and um, I love the sort of elasticated cuff, which gives that sort of slight poofy um, sleeve and yeah i've worn that loads absolutely loads i probably should make another one of um that top because yeah that one i wear all the time i think as well i love it so much because it is blue and uh, navy which i love as a color combination i love the um orange buttons down the back i just i love that top and it's just so comfortable to wear then we have the tilly and the buttons pearl cardigan this one I actually bought the pattern on launch day. I saw it and I was like, yes, that is a pattern that I want. Um, and I got it. I did have to make an adjustment in lengthening um, the cardigan because when I put the pattern pieces up to me, there would be absolutely no way that I could have worn this cardigan um, with jeans, you know, however high waisted they are. Um, it would have just had such a gap on the midriff. Um, I can't remember exactly how long I extended it. It might have been about two, two and a half inches. Um, but I'm really happy with the results. And I have worn this cardigan quite a lot. I do find that sometimes it does ride up a little bit. So there are only certain jeans that I can sort of wear it with. Um, so I have worn it, but probably not as much as I would maybe just a standard throw on sort of cardigan. And then after that, um, we have got my pyjamas that I made, which I think was the top was the Whisper Blouse by Wardrobe By Me. And the bottoms were the Safia trousers from uh, Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. And I made this pyjama set using a beautiful double gauze that I got in a So Hayley Jane box. Um, I made that whole set out of two and a half meters 
and I love that set. It's probably one of my favourite pyjama sets because it's just so nice to wear. It keeps me warm in the winter, it keeps me cool in the summer. Everyone needs double gauze pyjamas. <laughs> I really, really love them and um, they've washed actually really, really well. Even like the little butterflies um, on there, I thought maybe might sort of wear away sort of over time through washing, but they're still going strong. So yeah, really like those. And then after that, um, I made the Atelier Jupe Frida blouse. Now, if you'd seen um, my Make Nine um, list for this year, you'll know that the Frida blouse is on that list again, because I love this blouse. It is probably one of my favorite tops in my wardrobe. I wear it to work all the time. I wear it when I go out in the evenings. It's just, I've worn it so much. I think it's a combination of the pattern just being a really nice, easy to wear blouse and the fabric. I love that fabric so, so much. Um, I got it from Fabrics Galore years ago and it's just so nice, so vibrant, like vibrant sort of flowers on this dark navy background. I love it. Um, so yes, I am gonna be making another Frida blouse and that one, yeah, it's probably one of my most worn makes. Right, quick sip of tea. Right, I hope I'm not going too fast for everyone, but I'm very aware that I've got a lot of things to um, to go through. <laughs> so next up is a toaster sweater. This is by So House 7, and the fabric is this beautiful cable knit. I love this jumper. I did make um, one in a navy um, cable knit, exactly the same sort of cable knit, um, a few years before this one and I've worn it so much and so I wanted to make another one and I chose this really lovely mint um, cable knit and I love that one again I have worn that loads I love a jumper it's so comfortable I love the toaster sweater I need to make more because I just wear them so much and that cable knit is just perfect for this pattern absolutely perfect it's got just the right amount of structure to keep the um, funnel neck um, and it is just so nice and warm. So I need to make all the colors in that one, I think. Um, so yeah, that one wear all the time. <laughs> and then um, following that, we've got the McCall's. Oh, I didn't write down the number. Let me just click on it so I can get you the number. It is at McCall's 7874. And I did do a sew along for this one. This is just, oh, it's just a really nice jumper. It's got so many nice details on it. Everything from like the crossover on the neck and um, the sort of uh, panels on the side, the big kangaroo pouch um, at the front. It's got like a sort of curved sort of overlapped hem as well. Really, really nice details on it and I really enjoyed making that one. It was a lot more in depth than your standard sort of jumper or hoodie, but I think it was just such a lovely, lovely jumper to make. Whether I'd make another one, I'm not sure because this one I love and you know, I'm not sure whether I'd necessarily make another one, but I love that one and I wear that a lot. And then next uh, on that one, so we've got, I need to remind myself, sorry, just need to check. It is the DG Patterns Lauren blouse. Now I got this free in a sewing magazine and when I saw the cover, I just wanted to copy it because I just thought it looked so pretty. Loved the little tie at the top, loved the sort of, um, sort of ruffly bit on the sleeve, absolutely loved it. But this pattern was not for me. Um, it just, the bust darts were in a weird place. The, um, the cord at the top, it wasn't long enough to form a bow. Um, and yeah, it just, just kind of didn't quite fit across like the bust and the shoulders. And, you know, I followed everything, you know, for what it suggested, but I'm not hundred percent sure whether it was necessarily the pattern company or whether it was the um, version that they put in the sewing magazine for free. Because I'm sure I've had it and I have heard it before that sometimes when they adapt patterns to put in the magazine for free, you know, because they have to do it in like a certain format, I think, 
Um, I'm not sure whether necessarily everything gets sort of transferred over 100% or it could just be the pattern just for me. Um, but yeah, that one just didn't fit me um, and I was not wearing it. So that one, when I've been doing my wardrobe declutter, that's actually one that I have um, uh, got a new home for. Next up is the Willow Cardigan. This is by um, Mood Society and that was a free pattern because I did make that for the um, So Frugal challenge run by um, the Yorkshire So Girl and Frugalissima. They're doing that again this year, um, I believe. So um, yeah, I loved that cardigan. It was really fun to make. I squeezed it out of um, one and a half metres of fabric and I do wear this one. I don't wear it loads. I think it is because of the billowy sort of um, sleeve. I kind of feel like it has to kind of work with certain things. So I tend to wear it with like um, leggings um, or like black sort of skinny jeans um, and like a plain sort of colour um, top. Um, I really do like the cardigan. It's really nice and cosy and warm. But yeah, sometimes the sleeve can be a little bit big. Um, so um, yeah, I don't wear it all the time, but I really do love that cardigan. And then next up, we've got the Hey June um, handmade, what was it called? Um, Sheridan sweater. So this one oh, I made in a really beautiful minty colour. Um, it was like a modal French terry that I got from Sister Mantaka. It was beautiful. It was quite an expensive um, fabric, but yeah, it was oh, so, so nice. Um, however, I did make a bit of a mistake on it because I made the size wrong. I completely misjudged the um, measurements on there and I should have made um, two sizes smaller than the one I made. So I cut out the wrong one in error. So it is a bit too big for me. I mean, I don't think it matters because when it's a jumper, you know, it's all right, you know, having the oversized look. Um, but I don't wear it very often because I do find it does swamp me a little bit. Um, also, there's just a couple of details I think, you know, I'm not 100% sure on. The funnel neck is really nice, but it's done with like a facing and the facing does kind of pop up. And I'm, I'm not sure if, if it's because I've used a model um, French Terry because it's really soft that it kind of just doesn't sit quite right a lot of the time um so yeah I just I don't wear it loads I must admit it's more one of those that I just wear sort of when I'm having a bit of a slouchy day around the house which you know is absolutely great you know I can still wear it but yeah it's not one that I really wear out which is a bit of a shame and then next up, we've got the Deer and Doe again from the ebook um, dressed. It's the blouse. This is the second one um, that I've made of this blouse because, again, I made the um, first one the previous year and I picked up this beautiful uh, um, Atelier Brunette um, viscose from Beyond the Pink Door and I instantly knew that is what I wanted to make. I also bought the um, Atelier Brunette um, little orange buttons to go with it and again love that top it's kind of like a slightly cropped um blouse but it works so well with my high-waisted um like black work trousers or my jeans um and yeah i love that top so i do wear that one a lot as well next up we've got um just checking the number it's the mccall's 8219 now you may have seen this recently in my um when I did my 2022 make nine roundup, because this was in my make nine. And yeah, unfortunately that one, it didn't quite work out. I really loved sewing it, loved the process of it, but it just didn't fit me. Um, it was far too low um, in the V, so I had to put, um, in the, or in the sort of faux wrap, um, I had to put a popper on. And even with the popper, it was just, it was far too big on the chest it fitted beautifully on the shoulders and over the waist and hips but just over the chest just didn't work so if I do make that again I will need to adjust it a lot um, because yeah it was far too um, far too gapy far far too low um, in the picture you'll see I'm wearing a little vest top underneath 
um so yeah i just it's not one that i could really wear and even with the vest top underneath it might look quite nice in the picture but just practically as a day-to-day -day thing it just I, I wasn't reaching for it at all so that one has been donated um just a quick um anything that i have donated um from my wardrobe clutter um <laughs> or my my d sash or whatever it is um i am going to be recording a separate video on everything that i've got rid of from my wardrobe so that will come as well um and then next up oh i love this one this is the scout tea by grainline studio um this is the first one that i made and i made it in this viscose um fabric godmother um or is it a viscose or is it a crepe i can't remember might be the crepe uh but i love it absolutely love it it's just so easy to wear i love the colors in it how it's got the black background with the yellow flowers and the cats on love it wear that one loads and i do need to make many 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 more of those scout tees because yes it's just such a it's a great pattern it's a great pattern um and i did actually do you know what i've just remembered there's another item that i made that i remember i didn't share on instagram i made my mum one. Oh bonus there we go bonus thing here you're getting uh one that i've just remembered i made my mum another um grain line studio scout tea um in a oh, beautiful fabric that i got from beyond the pink door and i gave that to her for her birthday present back in august um yeah i can't believe i didn't share that one. Oh, i must actually put that on my grid um at some point <laughs> um anyway yeah sorry moving on uh, oh yes, the Friday Pattern Company Westcliff dress. I did a sew along for this one. Um, love that dress. Really, really nice wrap dress. I've I've wanted to get. Um, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I wanted to get a wrap dress that fitted me because I've tried so many wrap dresses in the past and they just don't fit me very well just across the chest. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just my size and my chest size just is a bit strange in sewing patterns. But this is the only one that I've made where the wrap is perfect. And I made it in a modal jersey, which, oh, so, so nice. Love that fabric. Um, it is one that I think maybe I might size up if I was, if I make it again, because even though it's, oh, it's beautiful and you know, there's nothing wrong with it at all, because it's that modal jersey, can be a little bit clingy on the tummy so it's all right if i'm kind of you know at work or i'm out and about and i'm sort of standing up and i'm all right but when i sit down i'm sure you guys kind of know what i mean when you have like a very clingy fabric when you sit down um yeah it just doesn't fill me with 100 percent confidence um but yeah i do love 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 that dress and i have worn that quite a lot but mainly for when i'm standing up <laughs> And then we've got the, oh, again, another Friday pattern company. Uh, this is the Patina blouse. And I made it in a beautiful sort of lavender sort of um, viscose with these animals on. I made it with a white collar and I did piping on that as well because I thought that would just give it a really nice finish. Now, I do love this blouse, but no, it's just one that I actually did have to donate as well. I wasn't wearing it. I think what it was, it was the collar that was doing it for me. The collar, because it's, I think maybe because it was white and I made it in a very sort of lightweight fabric, it was just a bit wrinkly all the time. And I just can't, I, I just couldn't. I mean, I, I, I've got nothing against sort of wrinkled clothes or anything like that. You know, loads of things I've got, you know, I will go out and I'm a bit wrinkled. But um, it just bothered me. Every time I went for it, reached for it, put it on, I was like, mm, no. And I just... Yeah, I couldn't. So I know that it won't bother some people. So that one has um, been donated as well. Um, and then, so I've just got a little bit of me made May going on here <laughs> on my Instagram. Oh yes, my jeans, my jeans. I love my jeans. Um, I won a competition from So Haley Jane to go on a jeans making um, workshop with the lovely Charlotte Newland um and with the lovely Sir Haley Jane as well and I met so many oh lovely people there really enjoyed that but anyway the jeans um these are the ginger jeans um, by Closet Core and with the help of the wonderful Charlotte I made these jeans they fit I love them they're amazing 
and do you know what i did actually mention i think because again in my 2022 make nine jeans was on that um i mentioned that i was a bit scared about wearing them because you know they're a bit precious and um i didn't want them to like wear out and everything and i can't remember the lady's name um but someone uh, did actually comment going michelle you know wear them whilst you know you know they fit enjoy them you spent time making them and you know what yes i am taking that on board and i will wear them more because you know i love the jeans and um you know they're not doing any good sitting in the cupboard being a bit scared to be worn so yes i'm going to fully embrace wearing those jeans and you know what when they wear out if they wear out or they don't fit or anything like that then i can make myself another pair because i now have the skills <laughs> uh after that Oh yes, I made two molly tops as gifts for my mother-in-law. Um, one in a model jersey, which is the one, um, the teal colour with the orange flowers, and then a cotton jersey, which has giraffes on, because her favourite animal is um, giraffes. So I wanted one that wasn't too cartoony, um, but was just a, a little bit fun. Um, so yeah, I gave them to her for her birthday and she loved those. And then um, after that, I made, uh, this was a simplicity pattern. This was simplicity 9125. Oh, I really, really wanted to love this. I did make this from a viscose um, linen that I got in the Sahali Jane box. Now from the front, oh, love it, absolutely love it. At the back though, if I spin the picture around, it's it was really gapy at the back. It didn't fit me very well in the bum. <laughs> um, I really, really wanted to love this one, but this one was actually one that I did donate as well. Um, I tried wearing it a few times um, in the summer and it just bothered me, that gapy bit at the back and the fact that it didn't fit me very well around the bum. So um, I couldn't really do anything really much to kind of save it. Um, so I think what I'll do is I think I will kind of make a similar version to this maybe not necessarily that pattern but i really liked the fact that i made it out of a viscose linen um and i loved the color as well so i think i might try and redo that again in a slightly different way but yeah unfortunately that one didn't 100 percent work out for me and then next up oh yes the persephone shorts by anna allen i did this as a sew along and do you know what I am so happy that I did my jeans making workshop before making these. I think I made these very, very shortly after the jeans making workshop. And I'm so glad that I had the skills because I really enjoyed making those shorts because they, they were a challenge, but really enjoyable because they were different from the um, ginger jeans. Um, in their construction and how they looked and everything but I could just transfer a lot of the skills that I'd learnt from the jeans making workshop so I really enjoyed making those shorts. I do really like them as well, I have worn them quite a lot, um, I love how high waisted they are um, and everything so yeah I did wear those quite a lot in the summer and I will definitely be wearing those um, a lot this year as well hopefully because yeah they're just really really nice they were probably maybe a tiny bit tight at the time but i'll have to check um um when i wear them this summer because yeah they were quite tight on the waist but um yeah hopefully they'll be okay still <laughs> and then after that um this was a gertie shirt this was the um simplicity 9295 um you'll see me in the picture wearing it with my persephone shorts because i wanted in the summer i wanted like a pink and red outfit and this fit the bill perfectly um really like that shirt it is really nice the only thing about it i would say is the collar is just maybe a little bit big for me i probably would prefer a slightly smaller collar um, so if I do make it again, I probably will just make the collar a little bit smaller. I know it's because it's meant to be that slight sort of vintage sort of twist to it. Um, but I do love that shirt. Really, really nice shirt. I did make it in a 
um, a lightweight stretch cotton, which I kind of, because I just thought it would be comfortable across like the shoulders and everything. The only thing with this one is I do remember it being, it's a little bit of an annoyance to iron, <laughs> I think. So when it comes out of the washing machine and I iron it, just kind of some of the creases can get quite stubborn. I think it might just be that particular fabric. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice shirt, really nice pattern. And then after that, I made a little bag. Um, this was a Fat Quarter project from um, a So Haley Jane magazine that Tamlin from Sewn on the Time created. And um, Haley actually did um, a little live sew along for making the bag. Um, and I, it was, I think it was her first Fat Quarter sew along project, I think, that she'd done. And so I joined in and sewed it along with her. It probably took about half an hour, I think it was, to make it all in all. And uh, yeah, really enjoyed that. And yeah, I put all my sewing labels in there. So that's where they are all kept now. Um, so really happy I made that. And yeah, I love the like sew alongs for like little sort of little projects and things like that, that I may be not so sure of myself. Um, even though they seem very straightforward, it's still quite nice having someone to kind of follow along with. I don't know why, but I find garment sewing, I can just kind of go in straight in, it's fine. But when I'm doing anything else that isn't garments, I feel more nervous about it. Don't know why. I mean, it's only a little bag, but I still kind of feel like I need that sort of tuition. <laughs> um, and then after that, I made, um, oh, which top was this? This was, this was the Pattern Union Molly Tee. Really love this. This has got obviously cats all over it. <laughs> and yeah, I love wearing that t-shirt. It's one that I do wear quite often. I must admit, I don't often wear it kind of out and about too much, um, but oh uh, yeah, I love it. It's just such a fun, fun t-shirt. So yeah, love that one. Um, and then uh, after that, we've got the Galaxy Tee by um, uh, Pattern Scissors Cloth. Is it Pattern Scissors Cloth? Yes. Um, I've made this a few times and yeah, love that one. I made that with a fabric that I bought. Um, sorry if you can hear any banging. That's Stuart outside, my husband. <laughs> um, I made that with a fabric that I picked up from Fabricland when I went shopping with my friend Anna, who's You've Got Me In Stitches. Um, over on YouTube and yeah that was using a lightweight um, cotton and poly mix jersey it I mean it doesn't feel like it's got polyester in it. it's a really really lovely fabric um, and yeah I wear that loads absolutely loads that one love it uh, let's scroll up for a bit more we've got oh yeah next up the heyday dungarees by waves and wild I did a sew long for this one and this was using um, a linen uh, which, oh, I love, love, love these. I wear them loads, absolutely loads. Um, they're just really comfortable to wear when you're just kind of doing things like around the house or things like that. I just really, really nice. I must admit, I don't really wear them sort of out um, that much. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just because in my mind, kind of like dungarees is kind of more of a round the house type thing. Um, I mean, I have worn them out, you know, but I'll kind of wear them out if I'm just, you know, going out shopping or, or something like that. I wouldn't necessarily wear them if I'm, you know, going out and like sort of going out for lunch with some friends or something like that is kind of what I mean. Um, but again, I'm just, I'm not 100% sure what it is, but I do love them and I wear them loads, but I just kind of wear them a bit more just around the house when I'm doing chores and things like that. <laughs> And then after that, we have got, uh, oh, what was this one called? The I Am Patterns uh, Lucienne shirt. Oh, I love that. Absolutely love that shirt. I wear that all the time. All the time. Um, it's just a really big oversized um, shirt, which I just pop on with a vest top or a T-shirt underneath. I tend to wear it open more than I do buttoned up, um, just because it's kind of like a little layering piece. And I love wearing it with... Um, like baggy jeans or you know just oh, I love it it just makes it feels really casual and um, but just I don't know I love it I wear it all the time need to rip myself another one and I do think that that is absolutely perfect for double gauze if I made another one it would be in a double gauze as well um, I think it works so well probably because it's white background so it's kind of got that sort of shirt 
that oversized sort of shirt look being white but it's got like these fun little um like bunnies and little bits of um like sort of grass and foliage in it uh, after that it was the saltwater slip by friday pattern company this one i did um a live sew along um that well, i didn't do it so rachel um stitched up did a live sew along that i joined in on um and uh i loved that as i mentioned before i love following along with like sew alongs and things so um yeah did that um of an evening i didn't i'm not sure if i 100 percent finished it off during the live sew along i might have finished it off i think the day after um but yeah, loved that. Um, and I do wear that one quite a lot. Um, I mean, from when I made it, I mean, to be honest, I haven't been able to wear it for some time. It looked really nice with like a black t-shirt or something underneath it. Um, but for summer, absolutely perfect. Um, and then we have got, uh, what's this pattern number? This was a Butterick, uh, Butterick B6722. Oh, I love this dress. I love this dress. Um, so this was made using a really nice sort of like pebble effect, I guess, sort of almost pebbly, a little bit leopardy print um, fabric that I got from a Sir Holly Jane box. And oh, I wear that loads. Um, as soon as I made it, I just wore it and wore it and wore it. I haven't been able to wear it, obviously, when it's been winter. It's not really like a layering sort of dress. But um, when spring, summer comes around, that dress is going to be uh, back out again, um, being worn to death because, yeah, I really, really liked that dress. It just, I don't know what it is, the way it fits me, just the overall look of it. I absolutely love it. And it actually got me into liking sort of, you know, like the, like the ruffles or flounces at the bottom of dresses. I was never a massive fan of a ruffle at the bottom of a dress. I always thought, oh, I'm not sure if that's really me, but now I love it. <laughs> absolutely love it uh after that i made um oh this was my lego tank hack so the itch to stitch lego tank free pattern um all i did was just lengthen it into a dress um by ever so slightly going out over the hips you know um but i made it in this really nice um jersey with this heart print and then i finished it off with this mustard um ribbing and yeah love that absolutely love that just such a simple dress but oh i love it i wore that so much when i made it um and i will wear that tons in the summer because yeah it's just nice and flowy and just easy to wear absolutely love it um after that i made the oh i can't remember the name of these these are the um uh pietra pants uh by closet core um, I did a sew along for this one as well, I believe. Um, and I made these in a black linen um, viscose, which had a bit of stretch in. Um, loved those, really nice construction. Loved how they were nice and high waisted. Um, I didn't have quite enough fabric to do a full length trouser. Um, so I kind of made a just below knee, kind of like a, you call it like a capri or pedal pusher type um, length um and yeah love those love those uh, probably would make more of those and then after that i made um a hinterland dress by so liberated and i did this as a little collaboration video with the lovely catherine um from soverton makery and um oh speaking of catherine yes i'm actually drinking from the mug that she gave me afterwards <laughs> um uh, anyway so going back to the dress so yeah love this dress in a double gauze we both had the same double gauze from fabrics galore so we decided to do a collaboration video on it and that is a lovely dress it's just so floaty and oh i have to admit i thought when i first made it i thought oh no it's a bit tent like and you know it's just it's not me and everything but you know what after wearing it a few times it's just like i don't care that it looks a bit tent like it's just so comfortable it's so nice to wear i love the fabric um yeah so even though yes it is a little bit tenty i'm not gonna lie i'm more used to slightly more fitted um garments um but yeah that is just a really really nice dress lovely lovely pattern and then after that uh, this was um a challenge um blog post challenge that i did um on behalf of felicity fabrics where they gave me um some fabric 
um, and this was um, a hack of the New Look 6499. What I did on this one is, um, in the, the actual pattern is a dress and it's kind of like multi-layered um, flounce at the top. What I did is I did a single flounce uh, finished it off with piping because that was the challenge was to add piping to a garment finished it off with piping and just made it into a uh, little vest top love that top um, I must admit um, I didn't get a massive chance to wear it because I think I made it in September um, and of course the weather wasn't quite suitable for you know kind of like a strappy vest top so I haven't worn that um, actually at all I think since I've made it um, but I do love it and I know that I will get a lot of wear from that um, in the summer this year. Uh, and then after that, um, oh yeah, this was a Whisper Blouse by Wardrobe By Me. This was using some leftover double gauze that I used um, in my hinterland dress because I used a little bit of this fabric for the, um, like the bias um, binding for around the neckline and the armholes. And I had enough left over to uh, make myself a little t-shirt. So that's a nice little double gauze t-shirt. And I did finish it off with um, a little uh, watermelon slice crochet um, uh, patch that I got. I think it was from Beyond the Pink Door Advent Box. Not last year, the year before. Um, because I thought oh, it was plain, might as well just add a little detail. And then after that, I oh, love this dress. This was my Vogue, what was the number? 9252 dress that I made for the dressmaker's ball um, back in, is it September time, I think? I love that dress, love, love, love that dress. I did do a dedicated vlog um, about the process of me making that dress and all about the dressmaker's ball. Um, but yeah, love that dress so, so much. I felt like a princess in it, loved it. I got to wear my wedding shoes <laughs> again. Um, and yeah, I just, I felt uh, absolutely like a million dollars in that. Um, so it's probably it's not one that I'd probably make again. And I don't know when I'd wear that dress again, but I'm trying to find an occasion to wear that dress again um, at some point because yeah, loved that. It was in this um, like Ponty um, sort of jacquard sparkly fabric, oh, loved it. And then after that, we've got the new look 6428. This was a really nice sort of like shift dress that I made in a Ponty. Um, the pattern I don't think is available. It's not like in print anymore, but you can probably get it off like eBay um, and things. And I did do a sew along for this one as well. And yeah, really, really nice um, shift dress. Um, I do wear it, but not as much as I thought I would. I thought I'd wear it all the time. But I think it's maybe because it's a bit short um, for what I would usually wear. Usually if I'm gonna wear like a skirt or dress or anything like that, I kind of like it to be knee length or below. This one sits above um, the knee. And yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I kind of put it on and I think, yeah, it looks really smart, really nice. But because it's above the knee, there's just sometimes I'm just a bit like, oh no, I want to wear something where it's below the knee. I have worn it, um, but probably not as much as I thought I would. Um, but yeah, probably more one that I would wear kind of maybe to work in like sort of summertime. But I'd still want to wear it with tights. I don't know what it is. I don't like wearing bare legs um, for dresses or skirts like above the knee just just a thing for me um but yeah it, it is a really nice um pattern that one and then we've got um oh yeah this was um my Tilly and the Buttons Tabitha t-shirt dress that I hacked slightly to have a flounce at the bottom so I think I mentioned before you know I was kind of I actually quite like the flounce at the bottom of dresses now and I wanted to have a jersey sort of version of that dress that I loved um, and so I came up with this one. This is a Modell jersey and yeah it's navy with uh, minty sort of flowers and I love this dress. I love it, I love it, I love it. It's got a drawstring in the middle which I've done in like a, a minty colour sort of um, cord um, and yeah love, love, love that dress. Spring, summertime that dress will get worn to death because yeah, I love that one. 
And then after that, I made the, uh, what one was this? The Elian Mac Flounce Tea. Um, this was in a red jersey with these beautiful like foil um, uh, flowers on. And it has yeah, this lovely ruffle that goes all the way around. Um, I haven't worn that much, I must admit, because yeah, I did make that in November, I think it was, was it November, maybe? And I think I wanted to wear it over Christmas, but I just didn't have an opportunity to wear it. So it's not going to be one that I'm going to reach for all the time, but um, I really do like it. And yeah, it's probably one of those that I'll wear when I kind of, you know, go out of an evening or something like that. Um, but I would like to kind of make that top, maybe in more of like a casual looking um sort of fabric because i think the red and the gold obviously makes it a little bit more sort of for an occasion um but yeah if i just made one maybe in like a, a nice little ditzy floral or something like that that would be quite nice and then after that um i made the jarra sweater by megan nielsen i did a sew along for this one as well um love that one i wear that a lot um really love the color of the fabric of that and yeah I wear that with my high-waisted jeans as well because yeah again it's one of those that it is meant to be a bit cropped but I probably might lengthen it ever so slightly when I make it next time just because yeah I have to wear my super high-waisted jeans um with that but I love that I wear that loads um after that I made the uh, do it better yourself um billy blanket free pattern Oh, I love that one. Love that one. Um, wear it around the house, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's really comfy. Fully, uh, honestly, I recommend making one of these, um, especially, you know, in the winter. Um, it just keeps me so warm. Love it. And then next up, I made um, the Pansy Dress by um, Poppy and Jazz, which is a spin-off of So Over It, as a little gift for my friend's baby. Oh, she was one, it was her first birthday. Uh, so I made her this lovely little dress, so, so cute. And then leading on from that, I then made myself, because um, <laughs> I had leftover fabric, a t-shirt from that as well. This was the ultimate um, t-shirt that I got free in a sewing magazine um, by Thread Count. Again, it's one of those that you can't just go and find and buy it. You have to find it on like eBay or Etsy. Uh, but I love that one. It's really just a bit of fun, um, that one. And then yes, we get onto Christmas time. So I made a Grainline Studio Linden sweatshirt using um, the uh, like Christmas tree um, French terry that I got from Little Legs um, and love that one. Probably my favorite Christmas jumper that I've made. Love it. Um, and then I did also make another um, Linden sweatshirt, which was uh, using like an elf um, fabric, like the film elf. Um, and yeah, again, I just wanted a fun Christmas jumper um, to make. And then uh, lastly, I made, uh, yeah, the Nina Lee Southbank sweater. Again, Christmassy version, um, which was uh, using like a Fair Isle type, um, like soft sweat fabric. Really, really nice um, on that one. Uh, and yeah, I, I'll wear that absolutely loads next year because I, yeah, I did make it probably a little bit late. I made it in December, whereas I'd like to kind of wear it kind of, you know, beginning of November kind of onwards, you know, over to uh, sort of Christmas time. So yeah, I think I'll get a lot of wear of that next year. Um, and oh yeah, there was one other thing. Sorry, there's another thing that I haven't put in here, which was um, the um, Nico top by Jally patterns I made for uh, my husband Stuart as a Christmas present um, which was um, a mustard t-shirt uh, with some cat paw prints on as a, just like a, a t-shirt that he can sort of sleep in because it's long sleeve so it keeps him warm um, but yeah that was everything that was everything that I made in 2022 oh so it's going to be a long video and the rest of my tea's gone cold now. <laughs> um, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you made any of those patterns. Anything in there that really stood out for you as your favourite. Do let me know. I would love, love, love to hear from you. Uh, so yes, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed already, it would be lovely if you could. So yes, I will uh, speak to you in my next video. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you.